The Clearing the Crease podcast rolls on, powered by Bodog.eu. He's Razor, he's Kami, I'm Seaball, and man, that is a tough act to follow after the school <laughs> freeze. Uh, uh, Dominic, ha- Razor, I, Dominic Hashik, man. <laughs> oh, there's a lot to unpackage there, huh? What, like, and yeah, incredible, incredible. Uh, the, that team in Buffalo must, it, like I was thinking, just with him, May, and Ray, the three of those guys together on the same team. Oh, like yeah. you could have put anyone else around that and it's going to be something else. And and you add in Dominic Cassick and Ted Nolan and Muck, like all those great, incredible. Uh, what a guy too. He's just a solid human on top of it all. Everyone loves him. Yeah, he's, he's a great dude. I've been in a couple events with him and like where you go on stage, like charity events or whatever. So like a couple of times I've been on stage with him now when I know he's there and he's, and he, he's going on stage for sure because he, and he's great but like my first couple times like he'd, he'd get going and start talking and i'm like man in my head i'm like man i'm fucked i i'm not gonna be nearly <laughs> yeah, as can't. funny as this guy this can't guy go after him. i'm like you can't go after him so now when we're at the same event i'm like no 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 i can't go on stage if he's there because i'm like <laughs> he, he steals the show i don't want to get embarrassed yeah. up there you want to be the opening act yeah it's yeah, yeah it's like yeah, yeah it's like going on after taylor swift right it's like yeah. oh, no, i'll go first i'll go first <laughs> yeah. um, all right changing gears here um and, and how about this guys before the season started you had six teams, a half dozen teams in the league that made a coaching change, right? So Anaheim brings in Greg Cronin. You got Ryan Husky in Calgary. You got Pascal Vincent in Columbus. Hey, Babs. Babs that didn't last long. Uh, Nashville with Andrew Brunette. Uh, Peter Laviolette with the Rangers. And then you got Spencer Carberry with the Washington Capitals. And now here we are through the first couple of months of the NHL season you got the Oilers quick to move out with Jay Woodcroft with the disaster start that they had. In comes Chris Knobloch. Drew, Bran- Drew Bannister a couple of weeks ago takes over for Craig Berube. Dean Evason out. In comes John Hines in Minnesota. And then the Ottawa Senators, the latest team to follow suit with this sort of model or trend where you've got DJ Smith out. And 25 years later, 20 years later, here's Jacques Martin back behind the bench for the Senators. And, you know, with, with these recent coaching changes, you're, you're talking about a third of the league that has made a coaching change since the summer to now. And I, I'm curious, like you're seeing this effect of this coaching change. It sparked the Oilers, the Oilers of 12 and six, uh, pretty good run that they've been on over the last couple of months. Uh, you know, the blues are off to a pretty good start with Bannister. Uh, the Wild are seeing results. They were on fire uh, right out of the gate with Hines behind the bench. And the Senators eh, were in a bit of a TBD mode to see where they go with the coaching change. Oh, but but <laughs> does, does a coaching change, I, I mean, tell me this, because you guys have both been around the league a long time. Like, Kami, I'll start with you on this. D- does a coaching change make a difference? Does it inspire guys or or what? Or is this just the simple move to make now because of the cap? Well, I think it's an easy move to make just because you can't fire all the players, right? I mean, they're making all the money. Um, I think it can. I think it depends on the situation. Um, like I was part of, I was part of a, a couple. I can remember off the top of my head, um, where yeah, it's, it, it can rally the troops for a little bit, and you know, you got a new voice, and it's like, okay, we got a new set set of, you know, maybe this guy's going to like me more. I'm going to play a little harder, and maybe I'll get more opportunities with this new coach, but. I've kind of seen it both ways where I'll just speak from a personal level. Like, you know, we had a coaching change in New Jersey when I was there early in my career, Larry Robinson to Kevin Constantine. I went from 18 minutes a night directly to the press box without even not a word exchange in between. That was a catastrophe. Next thing you know, I'm at the bar busted, traded, gone. See you later. Um, Ken Hitchcock in Columbus. I, I got along great with Ken. Ken was great for me. And then he's gone, our Neil's in. We kind of went over that a little bit last episode. Mm-hmm. Now I'm gone. So, yeah, I mean, I get why they do it. and But, yeah, I, I get why they do it. But I, I got to say, I don't really love it. A couple, You know, the Ottawa one, you can kind of see coming with the new owner, I guess. Yeah. It's like, okay. And I understand that. Like, you know, if, if I if I spend a billion dollars on a team. You want your people. I'm, I want people in there that I know and that, that I want in there, not somebody else. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it's interesting uh, to it can work both ways. But like I said, I think immediately it's everybody's energies level up and okay, let's go. And so they right at right at the beginning there could be good results, but we'll see how it turns out. You know, a few games into it. Razor, I think what we're seeing this year, especially, is 
And, and I think the new generation on top of that, right? Kami, like what you're talking about when, you know, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, that was different. I think now you're seeing Minnesota, Boldy wasn't good. Kirill the Thrill wasn't good. Dean Evanson wasn't doing it for them. They obviously had quit on him in some way or another because as soon as John Hine comes in, both of those guys go on a tear. Yeah. Uh, same thing in, in Edmonton. It seemed as though McDavid had just kind of had enough. He had some injuries, but whatever was going on there, those big guys had tuned out their coaches. Knobloch comes in, their buddy, and they go on a tear. Um, so I, I And then I think the, the opposite side is, and you could say this for Ottawa, I think they waited too long because they're not getting the bump because one, they brought Martin in who was, I mean, okay, he's going to take over. But as soon as they brought him in, it's like writings on the wall. They're probably going to give him a couple weeks and that'll be it. But also they got too far down the road where they can't make the playoffs. Right. So now they're not getting that extra bump because they feel like they're still out of it. Um, so it feels like Ottawa waited too long where Minnesota has got that sweet spot. They've gone on a run. They're right there in the playoff mix. St. Louis, they fired their guy, but they're right in the playoff mix. So you can get a bump in the, in those respects. Um, but, but certainly nowadays more than ever, you need those top players to be okay with it. And you basically need to fire the guy because the top players aren't producing. But, but listening to the message, right? Like there's certain guys, if you get results for certain coaches, I mean, you look at John Cooper, right? And, and the run that he's had and the, the level of success that he's had over the last decade with Tampa. I mean, he's kind of becoming the unicorn, right? I mean, like mm -hmm. longest serving coaches now. I mean, I think in the top five, I think he got guys who've been around since like 2019 since they got hired, right? Yeah. Like, you, you know, it's, you know, five years and all of a sudden you've got some serious tenure amongst coaches in the league. But there is a sort of belief in terms of a shelf life of a coach, right? Is there is I mean, at some point, doesn't matter how good the coach is, people tune out, right? Like there, there's a human nature, boy. I mean, you guys, yeah. you guys have been in the room. You've you've seen enough. You've heard enough. I mean, there's there's a shelf life, right, for a coach? Yeah, you're hired to be fired, and don't. I think the the big thing too is is how hard the league is, the traveling, the amount of time you spend with the coach, the amount of video you're going over with these coaches that. It, it does. It, it's like a marriage times on steroids. It's a marriage hundred X. So you're spending so much time with these guys, especially that, if you're hard too, right? Like yeah, if you're a hard, then, like if you're a hard nose. Yeah. And then, and then you get the soft guy and you're dying for the, like it goes back and forth really quickly. And in one year, one season in the NHL, 180 days of a season in the NHL is like a thousand in real life. Um, and, and I think that's what goes to this quick trigger because again, you do tune guys out much quicker than they ever did. And um, GMs tune guys out. And owners tune guys out as well. I think that happens just as much as the players. Mm. Okay. Uh, Alex Ovechkin, right? I mean, for the better part of the last three years, we've been going, he's going to pass Gretzky. It's only a matter of time. And he'll be coming off a big season last year too, right? I, I don't think anybody predicted all of a sudden this cataclysmic plummet to start the year where, I mean, for... I mean, at some point, you know, age is going to, I mean, father time remains undefeated, right? But yeah. all of a sudden, I don't think anybody would have expected this shocking a start for Alex Ovechkin where six goals and we're almost at the halfway mark of the season. Um, does it change your perspective? I think we were all kind of of the opinion that Obi's going to do it, but now at 38 and, you know, you're still 75 goals away or so, do you change your opinion at all? I mean, do you still believe Ovi can do it or, or do you? Eh? I, I was kind of always 50, 50 the whole time. I'm like, okay. ah, but you're right. Like he did last year, to be honest, I was kind of thinking this kind of a drop off was going to happen sooner, but then he kept like proving me wrong. And he's 40 some goals, 50 yeah. goals. I'm like, wow, it's going to be interesting to see at least, you know, and I don't see a whole lot of capitals games. I'll be the first one to say, I think they're having a pretty good year. I didn't think they were going to be very good. Um, but like I said, I don't see a ton of their games, but it's going to be interesting to see how it is for me anyways. Like I'm going to pay attention how it goes moving forward. Like, like you said, father time's undefeated. He's going to slow down. Like that's just, that, that, that happens. There's nothing you can do about it. You know, the Washington Capitals organization, how long are you willing to hang in there and give him all the opportunities and fire him out on the ice re relentlessly until it's trying to get them there or is it like okay well like when do you wave the flag a little bit and be like hey it's, it's not happening we got back we need to go in a little bit different direction that's going to be kind of interesting to watch moving forward i think 
Yeah, I mean, he's less than, what, he's less than 70 goals to surpassing Gretzky, but, you know, that's two 35-goal seasons, right? Like, well, I mean, or, 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 is that, or is that three? He's like, well, oh, man, that's well, a lot of goals. <laughs> well, and, and all of a sudden you're like, okay, that that's three 20-goal seasons, right? You know, which, okay, could he be still putting up 20 a season for the next three years? Mm, it's, I mean, you know, are, it's, are you going to park him on the power play? I like how you Park him on the power play. Just let him sit there for the next three, four years. I, I don't know. Razor, what are you know. seeing on this? I know that's 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 the big one because I think we. I assume Washington wasn't be good. I assume they would just roll him out, play him twenty minutes a night every night, let him just go get goals, go goal hunting. And it seems the opposite. It's like they become a good team. I've watched them two or three times. Kami, same as you. Don't know. Don't have the book. But when I watch them. You can't get through the neutral zone on them. It's like the 93 New Jersey Devils. I mean, impossible. And they're winning games two to one. So that's the script that's flipped for me. I, I just assume they would lose four three all season and Ovi would get a couple empty netters. He'd get his power play cookies. And, and now you're looking at it, six goals in 31 games. I still see him getting hot at some point. I think that I am... Uh, biased in that because I've had a lot of people like don't you know don't you want Wayne to have the you know have the 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 lead and as a Canadian yes but I didn't play against Wayne like I did Ovechkin like Ovechkin scored on me I want to be able to say in 100 years that you know I got scored on Ovi so I'm a little biased in it but I do feel I do feel like he's still going to go on a run where he gets 15 goals in 25 games this season and gets himself to 25 goals where it's it does roll back. I don't think he ends a season with 10 goals. No, I, I I think the market correction comes where you look at his shooting percentage right now. Yeah. It's 5%. Yeah. Right. Like this guy is a career, you know, 12, 13% shooter. Right. So right? if he so splits that point. difference, he gets to 22. Minimum. Like his, the lowest season he ever had for a shooting percentage. You go back almost 15 seasons ago, it was 8.7. And he finished with 32 goals that year. Yeah. Right. right. So, Let's say he splits the difference somewhere along the way. You get a market correction. Like, I mean, I think Ovi's still going to finish with 20. Yeah. I, I, like, I, I, I it buy does it. make it harder. It makes it, it harder. Because it's not going to be next March like some of us, like me, thought. No, 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 clearly not, right? And like, then, I, I, the thought like of Kami him finishing said, with 40. No, I thought he'd be a 40-goal scorer this yeah. year. And like Kami said, then the organization has to make decisions. And then he has to make a decision on what he would like. So they, that, that makes it more – the longer this goes, the more – uh difficult it becomes yeah no no and that's that's exactly it i do think i do think he still finds a way to do it but i think the question is is how long do you continue to roll it out and, and just how long does it stretch i mean i think i think he finishes with at least 20 this year and then now you're looking at okay what do those next two years look like because there's clearly you know he's turning 40 sooner rather than later right like <laughs> At 38 right now. Uh, hey, let's throw into our fan question of the week uh, at this point. And uh, hey, you know the drill, fans. All you got to do is reply to this video wherever you're watching it on social media or whether you're watching it on YouTube. And you can reply to either Kami, Razor, myself. Fire out a question. And if we pick it, it's the fan question of the week. And you get yourself a free NHL jersey courtesy of your friends and ours at Bodog. So this week, we got Cameron from Orangeville who says, Happy New Year, fellas. Love the show. It's a great one. Looking forward to many more. Rod the Bod episode was the last one I listened to, and I loved it. My question is, have you ever had a teammate who ever had to sell their jersey number to a big star? And if so, how much? Always curious about that stuff. And Kami, stay in one, says Cameron. <laughs> so, looking at yourself in the mirror from Mexico, he's telling you, to keep Whoa. going. Just keep going. Just keep going. Don't just break the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Get a bigger I, mirror. <laughs> that is a really good question. Um, and I've been racking my brain thinking about it since I, we read the question or whatever. I don't have... I can't think of one instance. Like I know for sure it has happened when somebody comes in and it'll be, but I can't think of anything. And I sent some text messages too. I sent a text message to Ray Whitney, who's been all over the league. I'm like, Hey man, do you got, is there anything that happened in Carolina? And it was a no. So I got nothing. Like whenever I got traded, obviously he's talking about a big star. So that is not the category I'm included in. But like whenever I went to a new team and somebody had my number, I'm just like, when I went to Ottawa, 22 was Chris Kelly. 
I'm like, well, and he, he kind of looked at me. I'm like, dude, I'll take another number. We'll just go 22 <laughs> times two. I'll go 44. And that was a catastrophe. But yeah, I don't, I don't have any stories of anybody like selling their number, but I would yeah. think if something happened, it would be like a gift of some kind or something like that. Yeah, no, there was no, nobody, everyone in the NHL is too cheap too. Like the NHL guys are way too cheap to worry about a number. Like guys aren't paying big bucks for a number. Uh, they're they're more likely to keep their hundred grand in their pocket. So to Kami's point, there might be a steak dinner, it might be a watch or something real on the on the low key level. But I've never been around uh, anybody that was taking numbers or you know, important enough. I bet I bet Barney had some guys in the Rangers. They might have been tossing money around for that. The, the sounds oh of the, the way that was going. But yeah, we should um, ask Barney. That would be a good one. Yeah, no, not nothing for me either. Uh, again, most NHL guys are way too cheap to worry about a number. They'd rather have the cash hole. I think Fair a lot enough. of guys in the NHL too, hockey wise, there's kind of like a respect thing. Like, let's say you know, I'll just reverse it. It's the first thing that comes to mind. Let's say I was I was number two in Calgary, and Al McKinnis comes in, and, and he's number two. Like I would see that and be like, he can have a number. I'll get another one. Like <laughs> yeah, you would be. You would act. That's a, up. that's a great point. That no one would ever actually like try and sell it because then you're you're getting you're getting dealt. Your teammates hate you. The new guy hates you. Like you're kind yeah. of a bad guy in the NHL if you are asking for money for a number. Yeah. Well, there you go, Cameron. May not have been the answer you were looking for, but you got a free jersey out of it, so can't be all there bad. I want to throw. I'm going to throw a quick curveball at you guys based on something I saw on social media the other day. Razor, you jumped in on this, and I was actually surprised at how many NHLers jumped in on this as well. It was a tweet from former guest here on Clearing the Crease, uh, uh, Justin Williams, who said, "You know, I've been retired a couple of years ago." but I still have dreams that I'm late for my game, no matter what I do. And I can't get there in time. Does anyone else have this? And there is a thread of responses from other players, veteran players, current retired, and all these guys with, you know, talking about their, these nightmares that they have, like still retired and active and razor. I saw you kind of wave it in there. Like, yeah, oh, that's yeah. Happened. like, do you guys still, I mean, you guys have both been out of the game in terms of, from a player standpoint for a few years now, but do you still have those sort of game day dreams where you miss a flight? Like I remember as a reporter, like, you know, I'd have a nightmare that I'd miss a, a live hit or you miss a, miss a flight or something along those lines. But how about, how about what, what Justin's Mine is, talking about? Mine's not being able to get to warm up on time, like not being able to put my equipment on fast enough to get out for an NHL warm up, It happens once every couple months, but it's, it's real. And it's, it's something, I don't know what it is, but I can't get my equipment. Somehow I got putting it on too late and, and I missed the entire warm up in the NHL game. It's, it's a weird thing. Kami, you just a smooth sleeper or do you have nightmares? Do you have your nightmares? Uh, no, I think about every once in a while too. I went through a bad stretch when I was first got to Columbus where like I couldn't sleep. Like I was really having a hard time sleeping. And as a result, and like they didn't have alarms on the phones yet. And and like I was late to a couple of things. And that's not a good look. And then because I'm single, like what do people think? Well, he was out drinking. Well, I wasn't out drinking. I couldn't sleep. And then I you know, and I would just finally fall asleep at five in the morning. And then I had got to be up at seven or eight or whatever. And then I was late a few times. I went on like online. I got this like alarm clock where it was a pad that you put under the mattress and then another pad that you put underneath the pillow. And when the alarm goes off, this shocking thing you. shakes. Yeah. <laughs> and shakes. Like this thing down there was like rattling my teeth out of my mouth. And I, like, I went and this. this. And I'm like, man, I gotta I, I, I gotta do something about this. So every uh, once in a while, when I like, let's say I have a flight or something these days or something like that that I have to get to the next day. I do like think back on that and be like, I end up setting my alarm. Like I'm there. Where's at the, the pad? I need the I'm pad. Big time. I'm there way too early. Like, so I still some PSD or PTSD or whatever they call yeah. it. You basically just admitted to everybody on the show and that listens that you wake, you woke up to a vibrator. <laughs> yes. That shocks you both. Yeah. Shock? Man, was, I'll tell you what, that thing, you, I had to move it from my pillow. Cause like literally <laughs> man, that thing would fucking rattle your teeth. <laughs> Oh, first time I was scared the living fuck out of me. <laughs> like, oh my god! <laughs> what the oh, hell's man. going? The hell of a way to wake up. <laughs> yeah. Well, 
on that note, uh, I think they're giving us the go home cue and uh, that's a perfect way to jump off here on this one. Uh, happy 2024, everybody. For those of you uh, hanging out with us uh, each and every uh, episode, really appreciate that. Just a quick reminder, the NHL season is cooking along. Action is red hot. So what are you waiting for? Get on in on part of that action and make a play with game odds, game props, all you need to make hockey exciting every single night with bodog.eu bodog has you covered with the action that'll keep you locked in for every single shift all season long make a play now with bodog and don't forget new players can take advantage of the bodog bonus all you got to do is use the code crease 400 when you sign up boys that was a fun one awesome it was, that was awesome. Awesome. we'll have to get dominic hashik on the show so yeah we do yeah, let's, yeah, let's he needs a rebuttal where is he, he needs a rebuttal. A rebuttal. exactly yeah, we'll give him a chance hey what do you think of matt barnaby <laughs> <laughs> he said he wouldn't piss on you if you're on fire how about you um special thanks to barney for sharing all those stories going down memory yeah, lane with us. And, uh, for razor commie i'm c ball we'll see you next time right here on the clearing the crease podcast peace